The Celtics have made a signing, Blake Griffin, to a one-year deal. It's at the point in his career where staying healthy is hard to do. Staying healthy, I think, will be the biggest challenge for him and for the team. Explosive? I mean, he was an explosive player. I don't think that's really part of his game anymore. Serviceable when healthy, but <laughs> it feels like a sort of underwhelming thing. Up until a couple weeks ago, if you would have asked me how I felt about the Boston Celtics offseason, I would have said that they absolutely crushed it. I mean, so far, the decisions they made has been net positive for the team in general. Up until until obviously a couple weeks ago. And it seems like they made another remarkable decision for themselves. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to be saying. It's like, Mike, it's not that big of a deal. This isn't that great of an addition, which is why we made this video, which is what we're gonna break down here. Before we get to the content, we are still giving away copies of NBA 2K23 on my Twitter account. We also upload shorter versions of this content onto TikTok and Instagram, and we're posting NBA 2K codes in my Instagram story as well. Now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Hey, real quick, before we go to break, Blake Griffin, by the way, according to Woj, has signed a one-year deal. Congratulations, all right? Let me, he just let me. The brother is 6'9" can still ball and was a dunk master jumping yeah. over Kia automobiles. Yeah, Got yeah. to Detroit and didn't dunk yeah, for two yeah, years. Exactly. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? If you have been following this channel for quite some time, you know that personally we are very invested in Blake Griffin's story, primarily because, well, I remember when Blake Griffin was drafted. I remember how he was in the beginning of his career. I mean, Blake Griffin's draft class in particular is a very unique one because you had him go number one overall, but he didn't win rookie of the year in his own draft class, Tyreek Evans did. But in the earlier parts of his career, Blake Griffin looked like an absolute superstar with the Los Angeles Clippers. He was the sole reason why many of my friends that weren't into basketball ended up getting invested in basketball, primarily because of his uber athletic play style. What's ironic is he didn't even end up becoming the best player in his draft class, not even the second best player in his own draft class. That title obviously belongs to Steph Curry and James Harden. Hell, I don't even think he's the third best player in his own draft class because you also have DeMar DeRozan and then you have Drew Holiday. I don't wanna play this game, but for the most part, in the very beginning of his career, Blake Griffin looked like an absolute stud. During the 2017 offseason, Blake Griffin finally hit unrestricted free agency. This was during the famous time that the Los Angeles Clippers staff decided to show Blake Griffin what his career could look like if he decided to sign a max contract with the Clippers and how his jersey will one day hang in the rafters and he'll be known as the greatest Clipper of all time before trading him five months later to the Detroit Pistons. During his first two seasons with the Pistons, he was actually pretty good with his sophomore season, the 2018 to 2019 season, being probably his best season as a basketball player in general. Ultimately, his injury history caught up with him. During the 2019 to 20 season and the 20 to 21 season, he played a combined 38 games. And at that point, the Detroit Pistons figured it was best to cut their losses. After that, he just became a role player with the Brooklyn Nets. But at this point, he's 12 years into his career. You're already starting to see other players in his draft class leave their prime. I mean, James Harden is a remarkable talent, but for the past two years, he hasn't looked like the James James Harden of old. The same could be said about Blake Griffin. Thankfully, we can't say the same thing about DeMar DeRozan or Steph Curry or even Drew Holiday so far, but it seems like at this point, Blake Griffin has accepted the fact that he is a role player and he plays a role very well. He's reinvented himself as a player as well because the primary thing that Blake Griffin now brings to any team is his defensive versatility. He's really committed himself on the defensive side of the ball. Now, this isn't going to 
to necessarily translate to blocked shots, but a famous example of this is Blake Griffin was tasked with guarding Giannis and Atacumpo during the 2021 NBA playoffs. And while you can't necessarily say he was fully effective in completely stopping Giannis, at least whenever Kevin Durant needed a break, the Brooklyn Nets were able to stick Blake Griffin on Giannis for a brief period of time, and Giannis wouldn't absolutely dominate Blake Griffin. And that's Blake Griffin's role at this point. And it seems like the Boston Celtics are very aware of that. Now, the Celtics in their own right had a pretty interesting offseason. I mean, whether it's from adding really good, small, low-key additions like Malcolm Brogdon via trade or signing Danilo Gallinari prior to him tearing his ACL, which I thought was a great addition prior to that incident happening. Do you want to add an additional player that could potentially bring scoring to the team, maybe in the form of Carmelo Anthony? Or would you rather commit to defense? What if you bump into the Brooklyn Nets again and this time they actually have their together. What if you have to go up against the Milwaukee Bucks? Or let's say early on, you have to go up against the Toronto Raptors in a playoff series or hell, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Blake Griffin provides a lot of value in that regard. Now, is he going to get like 30 minutes a game? No, most definitely not. But this was reason enough for the Boston Celtics to look at Blake Griffin and say, okay, I think this makes a lot of sense. Blake Griffin is a player that could defend the five and that's enough for the Boston Celtics to make this decision. Because according to Adrian Wojnarowski, Free agent Blake Griffin has agreed to a one-year, fully guaranteed deal with the Boston Celtics, sources tell ESPN. Griffin gives the Celtics some front court depth, especially with center Robert Williams out several weeks following knee surgery. Could you imagine if Blake Griffin eventually finds himself starting during the beginning of the NBA season for the Boston Celtics? That would just sound so preposterous to me. I personally can't understand it, but the Boston Celtics team looks so interesting at the this point. I mean, you have a lot of players that at some point were highly touted prospects on their training camp roster. I mean, according to this ESPN article by Tim Boneteps, the Boston Celtics now have 11 fully guaranteed contracts on their roster, though that number does not include Al Horford's mostly guaranteed deal. Boston entered training camp with several players, including Noah Vonley, Denzel Valentine, Justin Jackson, and Jake Lehman, competing for roster spots at the back end of the roster while center Luke Cornett is also expected to make the team. It's crazy to see Noah Vonley in this situation because I remember as a Laker fan, I was actually pissed that we took Julius Randle over Noah Vonley, thinking that Noah Vonley had a significantly higher ceiling and could potentially develop into a better player. But although he was viewed as a gigantic project, ultimately, I guess I was wrong about that. So let me know in the comment section down below if you're a Celtic fan, how do you feel about the signing of Blake Griffin? If you're a Blake Griffin fan, I I know you guys exist. Do you think this is the destination where you could finally win a championship? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.